This is Professor Gabor, and Chapter 5, Continuous Random Variables. We already talked about discrete random variables, and what made it a uh, distribution discrete was it was either uh, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, the set of numbers that could be possible there were either finite or uh, infinite, but in between any two randomly selected items, there was only a finite number of observations that we could consider. So a continuous random variable is a graph of a continuous variable is a curve. So it's not individual items anymore. It's uh, between any two points on the x-axis, there's an infinite number of um, possibilities. The curve is called the probability density function, which we have been calling already PDF. We use the symbol f of x, not probability anymore, because it's more of a mathematical function uh, that corresponds to this graph. And we use the density function to draw the probability distribution. The outcomes are measured, not counted. In the discrete distribution, we said how many occur at here. So we had the frequency and the relative frequency that became the probability. The entire area under the curve and above the x-axis is equal to 1. So probability is found at intervals of x. At any individual x, the probability of x, the function value at that, the probability of that is 0. So we're always looking at in-betweens. So the probability of x be being between two points, like C and D, and it is the interval between the values C and D. And it doesn't matter if it's less than or less than or equal to. Um, it ends up being the same because the probability of each individual item is actually zero. So there we have it. Uh, the probability of any, any individual, as we said before, is equal to zero. And so we get this. And the probability of C less than X less than D, where C and D are actual numbers, um, is the same as C less than or equal to X less than or equal to D. The probability is the same. So we define a continuous probability density function. We use the function notation f of x. Uh, so, you know, you probably have had some introduction of functions in, in uh, college algebra or, uh, you know, intermediate algebra, or if you take a pre-calculus course, for sure you've done that. And since the maximum probability is 1, the maximum area is also 1. So in this case, probability equals area. So here is a very simple one. The, consider the function 1 over 20 for x being between 0 and 20. In other words, the domain is from 0 to 20. So if I have 20 as the length and I multiply 20 times the height, the area is going to be 1, which is, this would qualify as a probability density function. At each point, the density function value is 1 20th. But the probability of an individual item, probability of 20 or probability of 1, is always 0. Now, suppose we want to find the probability, the area of this function, 1 20th, between the points 0 and 2. So we go 0 to 2. This is of length 2. This is of height 1 20th. So the area is height times width. It becomes 2 is the base of the rectangle, so base times height is the area. So it becomes 2 times 1 20th, it becomes 1 10th or 0.1. And as, you know, if, since it can't be below 0, um, we're only concerned about, in this case, well, it can be, but it's, it, you could, since you know the domain is 0 to 2 uh, or 0 to 20, you could make just say x is less than 2. So between 4 and 5, how does it work? Or 4 and 15. Well, four, 15 minus 4 is 11. Uh, so that's a base. That becomes 11. This becomes 1 20th, so it becomes 11 20th. Or um, if you reduce it to tenths, you could do that as well. You put it in decimal places. Suppose we want to find the probability of x equals 15 on an xy graph x equals 15 is a vertical line. The vertical line has no width, 
Therefore, the probability at a specific point is zero. I could do less than 15. I could do greater than 15 in the 0 to 20 domain. This probability less than 15 is 1 minus the probability greater than 15. So they're complements of each other. The CDF that we've talked about before, and we've introduced this concept, cumulative uh, relative cumulative density, or re relative cu cumulative um, frequency, or cumulative density function we've talked about. It's always a possibility. So here's where we can illustrate it. From 0 to 15 is the CDF of this function. The probability of 0 up to a number is always a cumulative density function. So if we have probability of x being less than or equal to x can also be written as probability of x less than x. We know that it's called the CDF cumulative density function. It's the less than or equal to symbol is used here. Uh, we can use the CDF to calculate probability of x, big X being greater than x. Well, how do we calculate that? It's 1 minus the CDF, 1 minus the probability that x is less than. So if I take this number uh, here, we consider we draw this graph. The height is 1 eighth, and we go from 0 to 8. So I know that if I take 8 times 1 eighth, I get 1. So this is a probability density function for this. It's a, a continuous one because if I take any two points in here, in between there's an infinite number of them. So I also know that I can calculate 2.5 to 7.5. What's the probability of some of x being between those? Well, 7.5 minus 2.5 is 5. 5 times 8 is 5 eighths. 5 eighths is 0.625. But if I take less than or equal to 2.5 is going to be, um, I could calculate that, 2.5 divided by 8, and then 7.5 divided by 8. And if I do the subtraction of those two probabilities, I get the probability of this. So there's three types of continuous probability distributions. Uh, we're going to study the the in the, in, in the book, we're going to cut, study the uniform distribution, the exponential distribution, and the normal distribution in the near future. There's more than three types of continuous probability distributions. There's many. But the three we're going to study in this chapter, we're going to study the uniform distribution, the exponential distribution. And then in the next chapter, chapter six, we're going to do the normal distribution. So the following graphs illustrate these distributions. Uniform distribution is not unlike when we rolled six dice and we drew the rectangle of that. But we had lines because it could, the values could only be one, two, three, four, five, six. Here, the values could be any of the numbers. So if I go this uniform distribution from two to uh, what it looks like 8.75, uh, I can find the area, uh, you know, what's the probability of the random variable here being between three and six? And we don't, they didn't specify the height, but I know that whatever 2, if it's 8.75, in fact, uh, whatever that becomes 6.75, this height has to be 1 over 6.75. That's a uniform distribution, or it's always the same. Um, we'll study um, the exponential distribution, which is uh, constantly decreasing gets closer and closer up to infinity, but uh, the density function gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never touches it. Do you remember what that's called? That's called asymptote. The x-axis is an asymptote, and it gets um, asymptotically closer to the x-axis, but never touches it. Then we will do the, the normal distribution, the bell-shaped curve. Remember, the reason that we, we use standard deviation and not range as our primary measure of dispersion is because the two parameters of the normal distribution are the mean and the standard deviation. If you know that, you know everything about that normal distribution. So there's, I guess you could do homework 5.1. I, I, you could do that if you want to try. Uh, but I'm assigning maybe that problem, maybe other ones. So let's look at the uniform distribution. 
It's the probability density function is 1 minus b divided b minus a, where b a is less than x is less than b. So we have um, the domain of this function. The only values x can take is from a to b. The formula for the theoretical mean and standard deviation, well, the mean is going to be really b minus a plus b over 2. It's going to be the average. It's going to be the midpoint of those two because the height of this function is 1 over that distance. So when I take this distance, b minus a, and multiply it by this, I'm going to get 1. And it's always going to be a rectangle. The notation looks like this. It's uniform for u. x has a distribution. That's what this squiggle sign or tilde means. And the two parameters are the minimum it can take and the maximum it can take. And that defines the whole distribution. The lowest, uh, where a is the lowest value of x and b is the highest value x can take on. So the probability of any numbers in between a and b that c is less than x is less than d is f of x divided by d minus c. Because the value is always going to be a constant, this 1 over b minus a. So, and the standard deviation is b minus a squared divided by 12. If you want to look at the calculus where you get that, remember we take x times a pr probability density function, so they're taking an integral, and that's how they solve this. And if you take what they call the second moment, which is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared, that's how you get this. So it's a, it, 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 calculus is required. It's not hard calculus in the form of the uniform distribution, but that gives you the variance, and the square root of the variance is, of course, the standard deviation. And if it's b minus a squared, uh, the numerator just becomes the absolute value of b minus a. The denominator is the square root of 12. All right, so here's some data. Following number of passengers on 35 different charter fishing boats. The sample mean is 7.9, and the sample standard deviation is 4.33. The data follow a uniform distribution where all values, including 0 and 14, are equally likely. Uh, state the values of A and B. Write the distribution in proper notation, and calculate the theory theoretical mean and standard deviation. So here's some, some data, but we're assuming it's a, a uniform distribution. So A is 0, B is 14, so the, it's going to look like X has a distribution uniform, 0 to 14, where the mean is now going to be 14 plus 0 divided by 2 is 7. And if you do the uh, the formula down here, 14 minus 0 squared divided by 12, and then take the square root, it comes out to be 4.04. A distribution that's uh, given this. Um, X has a distribution uniform 0, 20. Uh, find the 90th percentile. Well, what does that mean? So let's look at this. Let's uh, bring... So this is... Uniform example. Uniform distribution example. So what defines this? Let's do it. Lower limit is, remember it's the first thing to go, is zero. Upper limit of this distribution or the upper border of the domain is 20. And let's make this bigger so you can see it. So these are the parameters of the distribution. We've been putting the parameters in orange. And there we go. Let's uh, put a border around it. And now what questions do we want to ask? What is the probability of two minus, uh, you know, x being between 2 and 18? And then we want to find a 90th percentile. So probability of a 
here's one way of doing it. There's many ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it this way. So we have x, and we have, uh, it goes between 0, uh, and we go up to 20, I believe, equals this. plus 1. And let's take it all the way down to 20. And now let's do the cumulative distribution of this. So if I bring this down here a little bit, and I do that, and I just do the CDF. And it's uniform. So let's say it's uniform. So we know And we know it's always going to be uh, uniform and, I don't know, what do we want to say? F of X X is always going to be equal to 1 divided by 20, which is 0.05. So what's the probability of Remember, this is less than or equal to zero. Uh, so the probability is going to be zero there. But uh, the probability of the cumulative probability up to one is going to be one minus zero times 0.05. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Didn't mean to make it bold. I meant to make it boxed. I meant to make that bold. So it's going to be equal to this, because it's always going to be from 0 up to this number, times this number, which is the value of the function. So it's going to be 0 0.05. And I'm going to put a dollar sign there, because I want to bring that all the way down. So let's bring it all the way down. And let's make everything two decimal places. OK, so what's the question they're asking? The probability between 2 and 18. Um, this is the probability of x being less than 2 equals 0.1. The probability of x being less than 18, we said. Is 0.9. So that's not a comma, that's a less than sign. The probability of Two being less than x being less than 18 is the probability of point not of, of it being less than 18 minus the probability of being less than 2. So I just take this is going to be equal to that number minus that one. So that's one answer. The other one's where this 90th percentile. Well, right here is where it equals 90th percent, 90%. So 90th percentile is going to be everything is at, at that level or low. The cumulative distribution function is 90%. Let's see, what do they get? They got 18. But they actually solved it. You can solve it this way. Uh, C is going to be 0. So any probability in between is going to be f of x d minus c, sorry. I don't know why it skipped up there. And d is going to be um, 1 20th. The probability, we want 90. So we want to find d. So I multiply both sides by 20, and it becomes 18. So the exponential distribution, what do we have here? The exponential distribution is also concerned about the amount of time until a specific event occurs. 
For example, the amount of time beginning now until an earthquake occurs has an exponential distribution. It's related to the Poisson distribution. Um, so it's the mean time between earthquakes. The mean time between failures. The exponential distribution is oftentimes used um, in um, life data analysis. Values for the exponential distribution variable occur in the following way. There are fewer large values and more small values. For example, the amount of money customers spend in one trip to the gross supermarket follows an exponential distribution. There are more people who spend small amounts of money and fewer people who spend large amounts of money. So it's skewed towards the zero. It starts high and the density function gets lower and lower. So if I want to find out, you know, cumulative probabilities up here, it doesn't change often. Um, if we look at it this way, it has one variable, m. And the probability density function is written this way. x has an exponential distribution with the one, and, and m is one over mu. The standard deviation is equal to mu. It looks like uh, a very, very similar to the Poisson distribution. E, this number E, is 2.71828. It goes on forever. It is a number that is used often in mathematics. In fact, it's, uh, uh, it's a very magical number like pi is uh, in calculus, in this case, in calculus. Scientific calculators have the key E to the X, so you enter X and it will display the value of E. And, and, and uh, if you put 1 in for X, it will give you the value of E. So the cumulative distribution function gives the area to the left is always looks like this, 1 minus e to the minus mx. So you can do this in um, Excel without actually having to use the distribution. So we never calculate for continuous distributions. We never do the PDF. Everything is based on the CDF. That's why the cumulative density function, the cumulative relative frequency function is so important. We haven't really used it up till now, like we're going to use it moving forward. But all continuous distributions, anytime you want to answer anything, we do work in the cumulative density function. So if I want to find the probability that I have 10 or less, it's 50%. If I want to find the probability that I have more than 12, well, it, Less than, less than or equal to 12 is 60. More than or equal to 12 is going to be 40%. So I can answer all these questions. If I want to take the difference between 15 and 5. So I take 15, I have 0.75. At 5, I have 0.25. Subtract those two and I get the difference in between. I get the area of 0.75 minus 0.25 or 0.5. That's how we do this. So here's my density function. The standard deviation is equal to mu, and the um, where m is 1 over mu, where mu is the mean of the distribution. So you see the mean and standard deviation are becoming very, very important. So in a case where you want to know more about the math, open the link below. I'm not sure what link we have below. I don't see any link here and change the values of C to create an exponential density functions. The value, so let's see, can we click on this? No, it doesn't open to anything. But, um, ooh, and it actually moved my thing. I don't want to move my thing. Um, we can probably find something. We can, someone find this and send it to me. That would be your assignment. Convince yourself that the area does not change when C is changed. And no matter what B is, the area is less than 1. We say in mathematics that the area under the function is very close to 1 when B is infinitely large. So the exponential distribution. It looks like this. The density function looks like this, where M is 1 over mu, 1 over 4 equals 0.25 and x is greater than zero. The distribution notation is written like this. So the distribution is, let's see, the amount of time in minutes a postal clerk spends with his or her customer. 
The average time is known to have an exponential distribution with an average amount of time of four minutes. So the the parameter becomes, and I don't know why they write it as M. I would have wrote it written as one over mu e to the minus one over mu or one over lambda e to the minus one over lambda, very similar to the Poisson distribution. The distribution notation is like this. Let's go with what the book does. The standard deviation is the same as the mean. And that's the magic of this, of this natural exponent base. Um, for example, so if I want to find f of 5, it gives me this, but that doesn't mean anything. I want the probability density function, which is 1 minus minus e to the minus mx. So now the probability of being less than 5, I have 1 minus e to, you know, minus 2, 5 times 5, or I get 0.7. 1, 3, 5. Remember that the probability of x equal the, uh, of equal to a specific number is 0. Not 0 factorial. 0 factorial is also 0. But I think here they're just saying an exclamation mark. So let this be the amount of time a postal clerk spends with his customer. The time is known to have an exponential distribution with an average amount of time of, of 4 minutes. So find is be, that he takes between four and five minutes to do this. Well, let's go and do that. Let's let's go to our Excel and play with it ourselves. So now let's go and let's call this postal clerk. I can't spell clerk. And we, we're doing an exponential distribution. So we have, we're saying it's exponential. exponential and let's make that bold and what do we have uh, the mean is equal to four minutes and now the units may count here so the standard deviation is the same it's also four minutes do I have everything I need to know about this? If I want to calculate something, m, which equals 1 divided by the mean, is going to be 25, 0.25. So let's make this bigger so we can actually see it. There we go. So if we use our standard notation, that's like... Now, what do I need to do? I don't know. Is there an exponential function? E, X, P. Yeah, there's the exponential distribution. And I have X, I have lambda, and I have cumulative. So now, if I'm using Excel, it does, it does the lambda for me. It will change it. So what do I want to do here? Let me, let me put some X's here. I don't know, x, let's try 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is how many time, how many minutes uh, the clerk is going to spend with someone. And let's do the CDF of this. I really believe in calculating the whole distribution rather than just answering one question and then answering the question from the relevant part of the distribution that we've done. So what do we get here? This is equal to, we said, exponential distribution. And there's my x, comma. There's my lambda. I'm using the mean now, not the m that the book talks about. And I want to put a dollar sign there because I want to do it. And I want it to be cumulative again because that's all I care about. And it should give me zero there. And what happens when I bring this all the way down? Well, boy, oh, boy. It goes very quickly to one. 
So by the time I get to uh, four minutes, I'm, I'm at 100%. Is that correct? So what's the probability of it being less than five? Uh, I might have done something wrong. It asked for lambda. Maybe lambda is one over mu. Let's try that again. Maybe I did it wrong. Instead of C4, it's or C3. Let's try C5. That's better. So lambda here is 1 over mu. That's what they mean. So it's the m, the mean time between. So if everything takes, uh, if it takes four minutes, the lambda is going to be 0.25. I stand corrected. Is it OK to stand corrected? Absolutely. I don't do this every day. I don't use the exponential distribution every day. I have to remind myself. So what was the question they asked? Probability less than 5. What's the probability less than 5? 0.7135. 7135. Probability less than 4? 6321. 6321. So if I want to make a little calculator here, I could do this, right? I could have... Um, So I say probability of 4 being less than x being less than 5 is what? Well, if I take my probability of less than 5, what do I get? I get that's equal to that number. What do I get when I take my probability of x being less than 4? I get this number. So I want to say that's going to be equal to that number. And then what if I want the probability of between 4 and 5? It's going to equal the 5 minus the 4. And how do we get a negative number? We can't do that. Oh, because I just subtracted 4. I just wrote 4. I want to subtract it from this number. That's better. 0 0.0814. 8.14%. So what do we get? Probability of x less than 5 minus probability of x less than 4. 0 0.7135, 0 0.6321, 0 0.0814. Boom. Done. The amount of time spouses shop for anniversary cards can be modeled by an exponential distribution. With the average amount of time be equal to eight minutes. Write the distribution, state the probability density function, and graph the distribution. So, f of x equals m e to the minus m of x. And so 1 over a is going to be 0.125. But we can do this a variety of different ways. I would use the I would use Excel. I wouldn't calculate all this yourself. And then I would draw it from, it seems to go from 0 to 20. At, at 20 minutes, I don't think uh, if, if it takes uh, an exponential distribution with a, a, an average time of 8, uh, 20, if I take it up to 30, it should be more than, I don't think anybody's going to spend more than 30 minutes on this thing. So what do we do? I go here. Let's do another one. Let's do uh, anniversary card, and this is the exponential. So what do I do? Let's, let's set it up. Exponential. Let's me make it bigger so you can see it. Exponential. And what do we have? I don't know. What do we have last time? We had mean standard deviation and we had M. And it's all in minutes again, so we could really just copy all this. Copy. I think I'm going to copy it even more. I'm going to copy it to there. 
I move even to there. Copy. Oh, I'm going to copy even more. I'm going to copy it to there. You'll see why I'm doing it that way. So I put it here and I say paste, and there we go. So we've got this. I make it a little bit bigger. That's good. Um, so instead of a mean, we have eight. And the standard deviation is equal to the mean, so I probably should just make it equal to. And now what happens here? I got my exponential distribution, and I'm taking my C5, which is 0.125, and I'm doing cumulative. And where do I want to take it to? Let's take it to, I don't know, we said 30. Now, while it's continuous, I'm... Let's see, how far do I want to go? 35, it goes up to 98. It's um, it's flattening out, but not flattening out fast. It's really, it flattens out and it goes at a slow rate. So now if I was to graph all this, that's what they wanted. I would do insert. There's my recommended chart. And if I want to graph it, I could graph it like that. It shows me the dots that I've graphed, and it shows me a nice line in between. Let's say I want to ask a question. What's the, what's the, what, who spends more than, how many people spend more than a half hour? Well, less than or equal to a half hour is 97.65%. So the probability of someone taking of X, of X being greater than 30 minutes is 1 minus how long it took to be less than or equal to 30 minutes. We found a typo. Why did I have a typo? That's we didn't have a typo. Oh, I never said minus. There we go. So it's gonna be 0.235%. Spend a half hour looking at the card. In a half hour you could have written a card and written your own poem. But there you go. That's the probability distribution function. That's a cumulative distribution function. They asked us to graph what? Oops. They asked us to graph the density function. Well, let's put that there. Probability density function. We can graph both. What's the difference? Bold. And what do we get? Equal to exponential distribution. And we're going to have that, comma, that, and I want to put, oops, and I want to put, well, I'll do that in a second, and I want to do it zero, because I'm doing the, the density function, not the, and I want to put a dollar sign there. And let's draw this all the way down. And how many decimal places should we have this? I don't know. I don't need that many decimal places. Let's bring it down to four. We'll just do four decimal places. And now if I graph this, I take my x. I took it up to 47. I don't know if I should probably take it up to 50. Uh, command. graph it down to here, and I say insert, and now I do a recommended chart, and let's do it that way. Well, I'll have a chart that looks like this. Let me put it. Let me put it next to this one.
so you see the density function is going down, the cumulative distribution function is going up to one. So I got both now for this. Okay, let's see what else is there. So that's really the end of the lecture for chapter five. It's much less than um, other chapters. And chapter six will be the normal distribution. And then we're gonna have a test on this stuff. And I don't know how I'm gonna do the test. I'd like to have you do your computers in the classroom, but um, then everybody has Wi-Fi and everybody's looking at the same thing. So maybe I have to use a browser lockdown or something like that. I have to figure out how to do this. Uh, so use a random number generator. Here, here's an, uh, something if you want to play with this. Just do this exercise. Use a random number generator to generate 50 values between 0 and 1 inclusive. List them in a table, but list them in Excel if you're going to do the whole thing in Excel. Calculate the um, the five data points that you'd use on a um, box and whisker diagram, which is X bar. Well, standard deviation, you might as well have, you have zero, you have max and min. I would do descriptive statistics and the first quartile, the third quartile, the median. Make a histogram with eight bars and then answer the following questions. Uh, in other words, eight equals the distribution. It's going to be a zero one. And use a probability distribution of a uniform zero one to complete the following. What's the mean? What's the standard deviation? What's the first quartile, third quartile? I mean, this is like you can answer this easily. The mean is going to be a half. The standard deviation is going to be whatever you calculate. But the first quartile is going to be 0 0.24. The third quartile is going to be 0 0.24. 375 and the median is going to be 0.5. Um, are the empirical values of the data, how do they relate, why don't they relate, what's wrong? Because you took a sample of 50 on something that should have an infinite number of samples. So you can look at those. And that's, that's really it. So there we go. Thank you very much for this shorter lecture.